In this video, the viewer will learn how easy it is to do basic configuration of the TRIO M-Series serial licensed data radio and to perform diagnostic testing. This first graphic shows a system in which two software applications are connected to the entry point radio, one to perform polling of remote serial devices and the other to perform diagnostic testing of the TRIO radios. Here the hardware used for this demonstration is shown. The TRIO radios are connected via coaxial cables to a four-port RF attenuator, which is available from Schneider Electric. This device provides 80 decibels of attenuation between any two ports, and it prevents test transmissions from being sent over the air, where they may interfere with licensed users of the channel. With a transmit power of plus 20 dBm, or 100 milliwatts, and 80 dB of attenuation, it can be seen that a received signal level of minus 60 dBm should be expected. Note that the list of hardware required for this demonstration is provided here. This image shows the serial port splitter, which is included with each TRIO M-series radio. The DE9 connector on the end of the splitter is for the user data port while the RJ45 connector on the side provides access to the radio's system port for programming and diagnostic testing. As there are two ports, either of which could be used to generate over-the-air radio traffic, all data sent has a configurable one-byte stream identifier attached. Data entering the radio's user data port by default is given a stream ID of 255, while diagnostic data is given an SID of zero. Data is routed appropriately at the far end of the link as specified by the receiving radio's stream IDs. In this demonstration, it is assumed that only one channel was provided in the license. This is called simplex mode, and it's becoming fairly common due to the limited channel availability in some areas. With a single channel and simpler radios, remote sites might be able to hear each other directly. With many data protocols, this is not desirable. In order to avoid this possibility, each TRIO radio may be configured with different transmit and receive stream IDs. Here, the entry point radio attaches a transmit stream ID of 1 to all outgoing messages, so all remote radios must have a receive SID of 1. When any remote radio sends a message, it applies a transmit SID of 2, so the entry point radio in turn must be listening for stream ID 2. Any remote that can hear the signals of another remote will now ignore those messages, as the transmit SID of 2 does not match its own configured receive SID, which is 1. Here you can see the TV Plus Management Suite main window. This free software is used to configure several radio models, including M-Series, as well as to perform diagnostic testing and to upgrade firmware of the radios. For this demonstration, we will open the M-Series programmer. First, the correct serial port must be chosen in the settings menu. Here we have only one choice. The baud rate is always 19,200. Next, we click the Read button. This presumes that we have connected the programming cable, of course. We will do a local read as we do not currently have a working radio network. Once the connection is complete, we can see the uh, status now says connected in the upper right corner. Serial port A may be configured for character layer and packet layer settings as required by the protocol to be used. Port B here is disabled as the M series radio has only one user port. The discontinued E series radio does, however, have two ports. The transmit and receive frequencies must both be set to the same channel for simplex mode we will use 405 megahertz in this demonstration. The transmit power is at 30 dBm or 1 watt, but we will set it to 20 dBm to match the stated value in the previous slide. Collision avoidance should be enabled. Here, if we are using the M-series radios only, we would use carrier detect collision avoidance just in case the diagnostic software and the user data protocol are both trying to communicate at the same time. In the stream setup dialog, the transmit SID or stream ID must be set to 1 and the receive stream ID to 2. In diagnostic setup, 
no changes are required, but note that the stream ID used is indeed zero. It is a good idea to save the configuration before continuing. For this demonstration, however, we'll just write this configuration to the radio. Once this is completed, we're not connected anymore, and we'll move the configuration cable to the remote radio and perform a read, a local read of that radio. The remote radios in a simplex M-series system are typically configured the same as the entry point radio. With one exception, the transmit and receive frequencies are indeed both going to be the same at 405 megahertz, power 20 dBm in this example, 100 milliwatts. Carrier detect collision avoidance, as before. Now in stream setup, we need to reverse the stream IDs. Because the entry point radio is transmitting stream ID 1, this radio must have a receive stream ID of 1. This radio will have a transmit stream ID of 2, and the entry point has a receive stream ID of 2. We'll click OK here. Now all other remote radios would be configured the same as this radio, so if we save this file, we could very quickly load other remotes using the same file. We'll click right and send this to the radio. Next, the M-Series programmer must be closed to free up the serial port because we're going to use that port with the TVU Diagnostics software package. First, we must go to the Settings menu to configure the serial port as before in the Controller Settings dialog. We set the same COM port as before and same serial port speed, 19,200, and then we close this. Now we need to create a database to hold all of the radios. To do this, we go to the File menu and click New. We click Save, and this opens a dialog which allows us to enter each radio. We give it a name, a model, and then the serial number. The serial number of the entry point is 85678. Note that the stream ID is 0, as mentioned before. The communication port in this radio type is serial. We now apply the changes to the database and add a new radio. This will be the first remote radio. Its serial number, 98688. You can put in custom alarm limits if desired. We will apply these changes to the database and exit. Now we can press the Group Poll button, and this will poll each radio in turn. We can then note the received signal level of approximately minus 60 dBm as predicted, the transmit power, and other settings. The individual poll dialog can be used to poll a single radio, as we are connected currently to the remote radio, we can generate over-the-air traffic by polling the entry point radio. Using a poll time of two seconds, we click the toggle button and we'll get a bar graph view. And it's also possible to go to the tools menu, select statistical performance, and to run a packet transmission test. We select again the radio at the far end of the link. We can select a time between polls, anywhere between 200 milliseconds and many seconds. A greater time between value ensures there is minimal impact on a working radio network. I'll click the Start button, and we can see now that there is over-the-air traffic. The radio LEDs are flashing rapidly as messages are sent to the far end. The far radio, the entry point, detects these are test packets, loops them back internally, and if the radio that originates the traffic gets them back, we have a successful receive packet. When we have decided that the test is complete, we click the Finish button. We can now click the Commissioning Record button and, if desired, print a report for later use. 
Thank you for watching this video in which configuration and diagnostic testing of the TRIO M-Series Serial Licensed Data Radio was demonstrated. Thank you.